Okay, so we're going to be starting on beginning proofs today. This is 1.4 in your books if you want to follow along or need additional help. Okay, first thing with proofs, you're going to be seeing a lot of theorems. A theorem is a mathematical statement that can be proved. We touched on this before, so this should be familiar. Okay, you're going to be spending a lot of time proving your theorems, and once you've gotten them proven, you're going to use those theorems to prove problems in class and on assessments. Anytime you are introduced to a new theorem, I will make you prove it. Let me underline that. Will make you prove it. You just can't assume it because it's in the book. You need to understand how we got it. Okay, so let's look at theorem one. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay, so we're given that angle A is a right angle and angle B is a right angle. We need to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. So that's basically what we're saying up here. Okay, we need to, we're proving theorem one right here. So when you set up your proof, you're going to have two columns. One's going to be statements, one's going to be reason. Okay, so your first statement. Angle A is a right angle, and the reason for that is it's a given. Easy enough. Okay, but now we need to take that and kind of deduce from that that the measure of angle A is 90 degrees. And that's because if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90. Okay, that's the definition of a right angle. Now, would it be easy to write just definition of right angle? Sure. Yeah. And would it be accurate? Yes. But in this class, you need to write out what the definition is. Now, for proofs, once you do it once in each proof, you don't need to do it again, and you'll see how that comes into play in a minute. Okay, so then we're gonna, now that we've got the measure of that, we're going to skip and say, okay, angle B is a right angle. Again, that's a given. And then we would say the measure of angle B equals 90. And here's where you can say, okay, just the same reason as two. We don't need to go into, you know, writing it all out again. And then last but not least, we prove that they're congruent by the definition of congruent angles. So if two angles are congruent, or if two angles have the same measure, excuse me, then they are congruent. Okay. Easy enough. And let's use that same logic and apply it to theorem two. If two angles are straight lines, then they are congruent. So again, we're given that angle ABC is a straight angle and angle DEF is a straight angle. And what we need to prove is that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. Okay? Now, this one's fairly easy. We're going to follow the same pattern we did before. But let's say it's not as easy as that. How do you figure out, you know, kind of how you go about proving it? Well, always kind of look at what they want you to prove. We need to prove that two angles are congruent. So we're probably going to use the definition of congruent angles to prove that. So let's start off. First statement, what do you think it is? Angle ABC is a straight angle, and that's a given. Statement two, just like we did with the right angles, the measure of angle ABC is 180, and that's by the definition of a straight angle. If an angle is a straight angle, then its measure is 180. Statement three, angle DEF is a straight angle. Again, that's a given. Statement four, the measure of DEF, angle DEF, equals 180. And this is for the same reason that we used in step two. And finally, angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. Because if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. So again, we're looking at the definition of congruence here. And remember, definitions are reversible. So, so if you ever needed to, you could flip-flop that. Okay, moving right along. So this one I want you to do on your own. I want you to pause me, um, see what you can do. This one should be fairly easy. Look back a couple. That's my hint. You're given that angle A is a right angle. Angle B is a right angle. You need to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. So go ahead and pause. Again, the only difference between this one and the last one is that this angle B has been rotated a little bit. So otherwise, it's the same exact problem. So see if you can figure it out, though, without going back to your notes. All right, so statement one. Always start with what they give you first. Angle A is a right angle. 
and I'm going to simplify that a little bit. And the reason for that, it's a given. Second one, the measure of angle A equals 90. And the reason for that, if an angle is right, Remember, this should always be if then. Then its measure is 90. Okay, so we've gotten the measurement because that's what we need to prove congruence. So now we're going to say angle B is a right angle. And again, that's a given. And then we're going to say the measure of angle B equals 90 for the same reason we gave in 2. And then finally, we can say the measure of angle A equals, oop, not measure. Angle A is congruent to angle B because if, if two angles are right, then, that's really bad then, then they are congruent. Okay, now look at that. That's pretty much theorem one, right? So why can't we just write theorem one? Um, not only because it's not appropriate in geometry to just write theorem one, but it helps your understanding to actually write it out every time. It'll come to you quicker, it'll stick in your head better, so that when you need it, you'll be able to recall it better. So. Writing definition of something or theorem one, not acceptable. You need to write it out at least once per proof. If you use it more than once, you can just say same, as, like we do with the definition here. You could just say same as two, okay? This next one's a little bit harder, so I want you to go ahead and try and do this on your own. See if you can come close to what I do. So go ahead again and pause. Okay, so we need to prove that angle DBC, which is this one here, is congruent to this one. This is a perfect example of why you should never trust how the diagram looks. Because look at this. Do these two angles look like they're congruent? Nope. They sure don't. Okay, but we've got all this information here, so let's use that information to prove it. So, first things first. Measure of angle ABD equals 10 degrees, given. measure of angle ABC was 100 degrees, given. Were those your first two steps? Three, measure of angle ABC minus the measure of angle ABD equals the measure of angle DBC. What's the reason for that? Subtraction. So basically we've got 100 minus 10 equals 90 degrees. So you could also just say, let's say I wanted to get rid of that. I was just here showing you here the reasoning behind it. Now that we've got that and you've seen it, what you would normally write, your first time writing that, I would actually prefer you write that, but you could just say the measure of angle DBC equals 90 degrees, and that's your reason why, okay? And then we would go to angle DBC is a right angle. Because if an angle is a 90 degree angle, then 
it is a right angle. Okay, let's go on to the next one. We can say that, uh, again, we have to give our givens, angle EFY, the measure of angle EFY, 70 degrees, 20 minutes, given. The measure of angle XFY was 19 degrees 40 minutes given. Then we can say the measure of angle XFE or EFX doesn't matter equals 90 degrees. How can we do that? Addition Because 70 degrees in 20 minutes plus 19 degrees in 40 minutes equals 90 degrees. Now you see why we did this with minutes and everything, right? Okay, because remember, 20 minutes and 40 minutes, that's 60, 60 minutes and one, or in uh, <coughs> 60 minutes equals one degree. So that's where you get that extra one from. And I'm going to run out of room here. So we can say that angle XFE is a right angle. Seriously running out of room. Same as four this time. And finally, I'm just going to have to put that down there. Angle DBC is congruent to angle XF. And that's because of theorem one. Remember, I'm going to abbreviate here. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. I managed to fit it in. Awesome. Okay. So, yes, that's an example of a long. Uh, proof that you would have to think out. So, finally, remember our final, our the reason for our final steps was in the two practice problems with theorem one. You may even be thinking it would be sim easier to simply write theorem two instead of writing out the theorem, or theorem one instead of writing out the theorem. But don't do it ever. I mean it. I'll mark it wrong, and you want to argue, and I'll just refer you back to here where I told you not to do that. And you'll make me sad, frowny face. Okay, that's it. Uh, see you in class.